You are watching and or listening to OccupySkidRow.us, a weekly VeteransNewsNet.us feature presented every Tuesday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific Time, live at SkidRowStudios.com. We invite you to join our discussion now. Call us at 1-800-893-9562 or text us at 310-266-9465. And now, here's your host, Chaplain Willis Buddy Clark Jr. Boy, am I glad to be back. I've just got back from Korea. Wave your flags, guys. Okay? <laughs> so, at any rate, I am sure missed being on the program. I missed you, Jeremy. I missed the program a great deal. We're back. We'll be... We won't be here next Friday because we're doing a new schedule. If it's the truth, it's better because the, the traffic is hor just horrendous. So let me introduce people. Oh, here we go. Rose is here. Everybody, welcome Rose. Hi, Rose. Hey, Rose. Hi, Rose. Rose. Glad you're here. Seat at the table right there. All right. Rose is, um, well, there's an expression in the motion picture industry called best girl. Mm -hmm. Well, she's way beyond best girl. She's the bestest girl. Did I say uh, that right? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do introductions. Okay, Steve, we'll start with you. Steve Weller, he is a chaplain <clears throat> and a pastor and a very dear friend. And after you say hello, introduce your wife. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here. This is my wife, Regina. I'm and Regina Weller, and uh, I've been invited by Buddy, and this is, I'm, I'm totally startled. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a chaplain and a playwright, and uh, I specialize in Old Testament plays, musicals. Nice. Okay, Rose. Ooh. You got here. Good job. Oh, Rose needs a microphone. <clears throat> Rose Hugh, uh, helping Buddy with Veterans News. Oh, and, and your friend there now, your first name is Kurt. Brrr, I can't say that. Some com complicated just, last name. It's Who German knows? Or it's Japanese some, or something. Yeah, something like that. Like a, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm Kurt Osmer. And there you go. Uh, it's okay. probably not the right pronunciation for, like, it's German, so who knows? <laughs> well, they only know a few words in German. Okay. Yeah. Bia and sauerkraut. Nice. Okay. And our next friend here, I didn't spell his name correctly, but his name is Antoine, better known as Q. That's right. I got a silent cue in that name, and for the last 15 years, we've been pretty loud with it. But my name's Anson Washington, and I'm the executive director of Broken Hearts Ministry. And uh, we'll be sharing a little bit more about that, but we focus on a number of things, and one of them that we'll be able to share with you is our Street Ministry 101 training that we offer. All right. And Sean. Sean is, I gave him a new title, okay? I call him the Digital Guru. Okay. I, I really like that name. You like that yeah, title? We, I love it. Yeah. Well, you certainly earned it today because had he not been in the back seat with his cell phone going on to Google or Gaggle or something, getting directions, <laughs> we would still be on the freeway. <laughs> well, we, we would be stuck. Stuck. We'd be stuck. Okay. Tell us a little bit of what you do. Uh, well, basically, I repair computers and mm -hmm. build websites. I build, I build computers, repair them, and build websites from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be showing your website later on. Well, I'm anxious to see it. <laughs> oh, you, you, <laughs> I think you'll love it. I really do. Uh, so everything you've shown me so far, I really like because your ideas are good. We sat down and talked. He gave me five basic questions. Out of those questions, he was able to determine what he thinks I actually do. I'm not quite sure myself, but I think you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have a little fun. All right, that's why I gave you the flags. And what we're going to do, I'll be cutting a new intro for my program next week. So we're going to have fun auditioning, okay? All right. So the audition, you see where it says audition there? And you see where it says you are watching, <clears throat> excuse me, you are watching and are listening to Occupy LA. Okay, Steve, you're on. You are watching and or listening to Occupy LA. Webcasting live and uploading on YouTube. We are at 643 South Olive, Suite 810, Los Angeles. Smack dab in the middle of the biggest, baddest skid row in America, downtown L.A. And now here is your, uh, another host, Regina. You are watching and or listening to Occupy L.A. 
a U.S. webcasting live and uploaded on YouTube at... Did you say, did you say... Uploaded or bloated? <laughs> I, said, I said uploaded. Oh, okay. I, I beg your bad. pardon, okay? <laughs> uploaded on YouTube at 643 South Olive Suite 810. Smack dab in the middle of the biggest, baddest skid row in America. L.A. downtown Los Angeles. And now, here's your host, Ruth. <laughs> This is Rose Hugh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching and or listening to Occupy LA, U.S. webcasting live and uploaded on YouTube, 643 South Olive, Suite 810, smack dab in the middle of the biggest and baddest skid row in America, downtown Los Angeles. And now, here is your host, Kurt. You've done this before. You've got practice. <laughs> You're good. You are watching and or listening to Occupy LA, U.S. webcasting live and uploaded on YouTube. 643 South Olive Suite 810, smack dab in the middle of the biggest, baddest skid row in America, downtown Los Angeles. And now, here is your host, Q. <laughs> you are watching and are listening to Occupy LA. U.S. webcasting live and uploaded on YouTube. We're located at 643 South Olive Suite, 810. Smack dab in the middle of the biggest, baddest skid row in America, downtown Los Angeles. And now, here is your host, Sean. <laughs> Thanks. You are watching and or listening to Occupy LA, U.S. webcast live and uploading on YouTube. 643 South Olive Ave, 810. Smack dab in the middle of the biggest and baddest skid row in America, downtown Los Angeles. Now here's your host, Buddy. All right. You all got the job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. You all Trust got me. the job. Okay, <laughs> we got a little We got a big here. budget. Now, Steve, I met this man years ago when I attended... The Four Square Gospel Church. He was just there as kind of a layman working, and now he is the pastor and chaplain of what I think is the most dynamic church in the world. We're small, but we're <laughs> tall. Steve, take it away. Thank you, buddy. Buddy's a sweetie, and he runs circles around a lot of the people and service workers we know at 84 years old. So uh, thanks, Dad. I appreciate the introduction. It's <laughs> okay, son. <clears throat> In Venice Beach, we have a unique opportunity. One of the things that everybody here tonight uh, does and, and has a, a gifting for is caring for needy people on our streets. And Venice Beach is a place visited by 16 million people every year. Disneyland runs a close second, but a paltry 15 million. And we have opportunity now as chaplains trained and equipped to uh, minister uh, good things to people on the streets, shelter, food, PTSD therapy, uh, therapy for, uh, for those that need recovery from drugs uh, and alcohol. And we've been doing this for some years and we serve alongside of the Pacific Division of the Los Angeles Police Department because it's becoming uh, ever more uh, dangerous out there on our streets. But let me say this, uh, God is good and all the time God is good. Mm. And we trust God for his protection because we recognize that we are in warfare. Just as Buddy is gonna talk about his visit to Korea where he fought in the Korean conflict as a Marine sergeant, uh, we too are engaged in spiritual warfare. And as Ephesians 6 states, and it's a familiar text, we are to put on the whole armor of God the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our, our loins girded about with the truth of God's word, our feet shod with the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And we take up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy of the souls of men everywhere and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And dressed and equipped properly, we engage the warfare through prayer. 
your prayer life, if you have one, and I trust that you do, began by calling upon the name of the Lord. Joel the prophet said in the last days as the Spirit of God would be poured out on all flesh that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, guess what that is? That's a prayer. When you call upon the name of the Lord as we have done in preparation for uh, this time with you tonight, we have called upon the name of the Lord. It's simply calling upon God who hears and calling upon him to meet your every need to first uh, save you by the blood of the cross of Christ and secondly to heal you of bondages for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for the tearing down of strongholds, bondages, alcohol, and drugs. I was a drug addict for many years, an IV heroin user, an alcoholic. I smoked cigarettes to the point that I had half a lung removed recently from, from uh, cancer surgery. But I've been delivered from, from all of those things that are destructive in my life, those things that tear people down, that don't build them up, those things that cause people to enter into jails and institutions and those things, unfortunately, that kill a lot of our loved ones on the streets of Los Angeles and every city in the world where there's a homeless population. We're here to serve you. And uh, we hope to occupy a place of prayer for you regularly that you would call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. My wife, Regina, is a senior ordained chaplain, and she serves with me at the Venice Four Square Church. And I'm sure that you will enjoy something of her experience with the homeless folks on our streets. Well, I'm not going to be so formal. I'm going to go back to when I was a little girl, I used to pick up all the stray cats and dogs and feed them (laughs) and also give my sweaters and clothes away at school because I... I, I lived in a, I would say, people called it a ghetto or a vario, but I got criticized for it. People said, oh, you want to be a rescuer. When I grew up, I realized that people like us had the gift of mercy or service. And brought about by either the creator had uh, developed it or gave it to us in our personality when we were young, these affinities, or by exposure, you know, to life, uh, uh, a time that that uh, challenged us or or caused us to to become who we are. And so, I when I became a chaplain, I was so happy to meet other rescuers. <laughs> And people said, you know, what are you trying to do, save the world? And I said, five or 5,000, it really doesn't matter. And I realized that I suffered more not to do something than to do it. Mm. Uh, So I I just did what came natural to me. And I think all of us at this table realize that. It comes natural to us. Mm. And it's a nice... It's nice to bless the planet and not to be a curse, even though I myself was uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol many years ago. And I I realized they were from wounds and uh, just part of my journey like anybody else's. And uh, I've worn a lot of hats. I was an engineer at one time for a large corporation, Uh, flew a small plane, just still crazy after all these years, you know, and uh, <laughs> and now you know I'm I'm older now, and and I've uh, I've realized I just like being with with women who are challenged on the street. I love sitting on the curb and having a conversation. It's just I'm comfortable with it because I know their value and they mm-hmm. know I know it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm an exhorter. That's one of the gifts, and it's an encourager. So I like to encourage. Uh, I found that out also, that big fancy word, exhorter. So I think we're all that also. We're encouragers. And uh, so here I am in this room with with a bunch of honorable people 
Amen. And uh, though I'm terrified of this thing right now. <laughs> so uh, thank you for having me here alongside my wonderful husband. Okay, we're going to skip out of sequences now and we're going to go to Sean, okay? All right? Well, your site is to Helen back again. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, like I said, I'm building the site. Mm -hmm. Well, my goal for you on the site is to get you known out there from the beginning. That's my okay. goal. All right. And I hope that you actually do like what I've done so far. Like when we were I sitting love what you've done so far. <laughs> I mean, you're on target way beyond what I expected. That's, well, I try to aim to please, but well, during when we were in the, the lobby waiting, I did a, I was in there doing a little bit of more editing to the mm -hmm. site so you can have a lot more appearance for it. Okay. Well, it's I hope that it's really good and I people like it. I'm just going to show a little bit of it. Okay. Of what my work is. It's right there. I like that because you see it's to Helen back again and most of you may did you see the movie Groundhog Day? Yeah. Again and again and again. So war is like to hell and back again and again and again. So you've done well. It, it takes time, but it actually... When when did you actually come to me and say, hey, do this fight in sight for me? A few days ago. Yeah, well, it's actually up and running. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Good job, cool. Sean. Hey, Good job. Hey, I'm not Good running. Up. I'm walking. Okay? <laughs> well, I run when it comes to websites. Well, I can run when I have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But only when I have to. You'll probably beat me. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Um, and basically, it's got the home. Then it's about, I'm going to put gallery in there. It's like stills from the f movie. And then a album's going to have a store for you. So if you want to start selling the films mm -hmm. and like, like how do I say it? Like clothes and stuff like that. So will that be like a shopping basket? Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. going to have a shopping basket. Mm -hmm. Then it says video. I'm going to have a little bits and clips of the film in there just to get people to say, oh, wow, I want to really see this. Okay. Like, what's, where do I go get it? Where can I buy it? Or I'm going to have later on down the road have the film download so you can actually pay for it and download it on the site. That's, that's going to be fun because, hey, do you want to go out to the movie theater or do you want to sit at home and watch it there with your friends and family? I just want to sell popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kettle corn type of guy. Uh, that's actually really good. And then we're going to have a contact. Mm -hmm. If you want to donate, okay. like whatever you want to donate or get in contact, you're going to have a phone number, email address, or whatever you want in there. Now, you set this up with PayPal in a very unique way. Oh, yeah. It takes, when you start PayPal, it takes a little bit of time and then you got to link your bank accounts and everything like that. I just embedded it into the site. So say you want to buy something, you can pay for it and download it without having any problems mm -hmm. towards it. It's easy to do, quick, fun, unique. Did you hear that, Jeremy? <laughs> I need help in PayPal. He's my help. <laughs> 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 um. Does that phone call come in yet? Well, he will, maybe. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Do you have your uh, pay phone? Uh, not pay phone, your cell phone? Uh, yeah, you, you, you can rattle his cage, yeah, okay? Mm. By the way, if he Who's doesn't call... Who's calling? Who are we, who are we expecting? Oh, we're expecting oh. Lionel Rolf, and Lionel is... A, oh, he's holding. Oh, yeah, he's holding. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <there's>, voila. <laughs> voila. We're calling you on the air, and this is Lionel Rope. Hello, Lionel. Hello, buddy. All right. There he is. So, so you... No, no, you, you don't expect me to concur with all the religious stuff, do you? No, because you... Look, look I know you're an <laughs> don't atheist. Don't be afraid. <laughs> and, and so, and we're, we got about half the room full of God-fearing people. Yeah, so Rosie's you're here. You're lucky you're not in the room. Now, uh, I've got... Oh, I no, I'm say, not in the room. Now, I want to say one thing. I enjoyed your birthday party. Thank you, buddy. And you remember when you were saying party. you were saying that the Christians were persecuting the Jews? Remember what I said? 
I don't. Do Christians persecute Jews? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what job. you told me, and I said, we're not done yet. <laughs> no, I'm sure not. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> so, Lionel, um, you've offered to perhaps do some work with me um, on to hell and back. Well, I, was, I, I, I wasn't going to actually work on the project, but I was going to write about it, and you... Well, that's what I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I don't you... know quite for whom, but uh, somebody. Well, now, the Huffington Post is very interested. They've got a guy assigned to me now that's doing some study on me, so I think we'll hook up with them and see what's going on. But you're such a prolific, and, well, Rose thinks that uh, you wrote the Bible, even though you're an atheist. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I might, I'm sure. <laughs> Supposedly King David is my... Rose, uh, tell him hello. Yeah. Well, yes. Hey, you. Uh, hello, Rose. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm alive. Tell them about your bloodline through David. Nah. No? But you yeah, are re I, a bloodline I, I related come, to, come, to David in the Bible. A, I come from an old, distinguished, biblical Jewish family. But tell them a little bit about that family. Yeah, well, let's see. Um, well, they were just a bunch of wise men, and they ran ran a cult for a few hundred years, and they claimed descended from all kinds of people. Okay. And they're Orthodox Jews, and I'm not much friendlier towards Orthodox Jews than I am towards any kind of Orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure I'm all that proud of it. Okay. But it is a part of my story. Sure. Oh, Lionel, while you're on it. Um, yeah. The last time I was on the program, well over a month ago, we were going to Korea for a worldwide summit conference of religions, and our main topic was basically this. Most of the wars have been caused over religious dogma. True so enough. what we're trying to do is to get rid of our dogma. So, um, Well, but that's the essence of religion. Oh, is it? It's ideology, which essentially represents people's <clears throat> political needs and desires. Well, and the essence, uh, Lionel, of Christianity, of course, is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever but believes on him should not very, perish, but have everlasting you. life. Well, God loves you. Whether whether yeah. you love him back or not, he loves you anyway. Well, most of what I, I... I mean, I'm perfectly willing when it comes to God to accept the idea of... Um, um, <clears throat> You know, Einstein's idea was there is a God which gives order and symmetry to the universe, but there's not a personal God who gives a damn about us, and I think the evidence is pretty obvious. Well, the evidence for... And, for and also, being, being a Jew, and you talk about the Holocaust and uh, stuff, and then you tell me, uh, you know, well, <clears throat> this is all God's doing. Well, my reaction is, God, you're a fuck-up. Well, that's not that's not quite accurate because uh, what man's inhumanity to man is simply a symptom of the condition of man, as you know the Old Testament. Yeah, but but you, but you know that you realize that Christianity was almost the first and most warlike. Oh, you're not kidding. We've religion. made a lot of mistakes in the flesh. That's what people do. But remember, of all the people in the world, and including all the founders of every religion and and ism and schism. That mankind has ever known there's only been one who claimed to be God and that was Jesus of Nazareth now you only have three choices either he knew he was God and said so choice number one which I recommend or he knew he wasn't God and said so anyway which makes him a liar or he thought he was God but he wasn't and that would make him a lunatic so the evidence is clear that every human being is required to make a choice is Jesus God and savior and the when only I, way of salvation I, when, I, or not? when i hear a great piece of music uh or if i write something that's really good i i am a creator i'm creating i'm making absolutely something. and that's a gift from uh god who created mm -hmm. you wonderful gift mm -hmm. or, or maybe i'm doing it all on my own i am a human being gentlemen th this is an incredible conversation that we will take up later on and because it's <laughs> good to talk to you, Lionel. We'll meet again, I'm sure. I'm in Venice, and I'm easy to get a hold of. Let's I, have coffee. I wanted you to expand more on Boreana Books and how the, that can help people find what they need. Well, I, I, I can't 
I, I mean, I'm like, I give you a shout out every week. So can you explain? I, 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 but I'm like, I'm, I'm like most religious folks. I, I don't know that I have answers for everybody's problems. <laughs> I, I know I know. <laughs> um, so if I sometimes figure out things in my writing and I'm able to say, well, I think such and such is so and so based upon either my fantasy or my research or, you know, whatever it's based on. Um, then I try to be honest to that vision. Um, so, I, I mean, to me, I think my religion is, is music and truth. That's beautiful. Okay, well now, Rose, you're on for Rose right now. And Lionel, we've enjoyed cu- talking with you all the time because you are a very worthy opponent. Well, I want- we, we don't call you an opponent. We just call you a very worthy person. So nice really to meet you, Lionel. Before you go, nice Lionel, you. I want you to tell everybody about Boreana Books. Well, it's my... Would you please do that so we yes. can get on with the program? We're <laughs> <laughs> the now. Boreana Books is a website that features not only my writing and my books, but other people's as well. Okay. And, and it's Boreana, B-O-R-A-Y... Wait, B-O-R-Y-A-N-A Books. That's all one word, dot com. And if you go there, you can see, let it speak for itself. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for calling in. Are we about okay. ready for a break? I'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah, we're good. Bye. Okay. Bye, Lionel. Okay, we're Bye. ready for a one-minute break. All right. Okay, and come back, okay? Thank you. Sweet. <laughs> and or listening to Occupy Skid Row.us, a weekly veterans news net.us feature presented every Tuesday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific time, live at skidrowstudios.com. We invite you to join our discussion now. Call us at 1-800-893-9562 or text us at 310-266-9465. And now, here's your host, Chaplain Willis Buddy Clark Jr., Okay. We're on again. All right. <laughs> I think we're back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got about, uh, what, 19 minutes left or something? Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So, Rose, introduce your friend. Okay. Yes, 26 I'm, minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm Rose Hugh, and I'm involved working with the disabled and through that, one of my clients had slash mental health issues, and I became involved with a mental health advocacy group. Seven years later, I'm an advocate. I attend a lot of conferences on the subject of mental health, and I attended the um, Latino Behavioral Health Conference. One of the workshops that I ended up in focused on PTSD and helping the veterans, and that is just right up the show's alley. And I contacted my good friend, Kurt, who is with that company, and he is here to expand more on the company and the success rates they have with PTSD. And you don't have to be a veteran to deal with PTSD. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mental health is a real issue, and there are answers out there, and his company is one of them. Gracious introduction. I appreciate that. And I also just, I, you know, I was talking to you guys outside before we came in here and, and in here talking to you guys. I just, I'm really honored to be with a bunch of folks who are really walking the walk. You guys are out there really helping people and, you know, putting your feet forward and, and the stories you guys were telling me before we came on air of just making a real difference in people's lives. So I'm just, I'm honored to be here with all of you guys and getting to hear your stories. And, and uh, you need to tell some more of those stories on the air because that was really, I was really touched and really appreciate that. So a little bit, so thank you. Yeah, you heard uh, at the Latin Behavioral Health Conference. And uh, what we do is biofeedback. 
and biofeedback is you look at your own brain activity. And that's not, you know, it's not doing anything to your brain. It's not putting anything into your brain. It's just looking at your brain. And just you are just learning from your own information. Like you might learn anything. You just see how you're functioning and you can learn from that. And so one of the cool things is we just show you that mirror of your own brain function. And all of a sudden we end up having these profound consequences. People start sleeping better. People start feeling better, improving flashbacks and all kinds of wonderful things. Mm. Um, so we've been at... Uh, uh, several military facilities, um, and what I'm really excited about is we're at a couple uh, uh, homeless shelters in the LA area, and uh, one of those shelters we're just having extraordinary results. We've been there since 2008, and just having extraordinary extraordinary results helping these guys, and and so the work we do is is really exciting. I'll just I'll toss out uh, you know some of the work that we've also done with addictions. And so in addition to the post-traumatic stress disorder, we work with addictions and the, the work with addictions is, is extraordinary in terms of not just helping people stay sober, but also helping them stay in the programs. One of the big things we're seeing, and those of you who work with addictions, and I know I'm sitting with a, a wonderful group of folks who are making a real difference in people's lives. So you see this, that one of the big challenges you face is just keeping somebody in a program. And, and that's one of the cool things we do is... By engaging with the biofeedback, it's, it's like it's giving you some leverage to do something for yourself. It's part of a program that you're doing, whether it's 12-step or whatever program that you're engaged in to help yourself. This The biofeedback is another tool to engage in to help yourself. It's not somebody doing something to you. It's only you observing yourself and learning from that. And when you do, that is what gives you this profound change. A little bit quickly, just on me, got into this because of my brother, uh, a long time ago, I was a little kid and we got into this because of his epilepsy and, and that brought us into this field and, and, and made a profound change in his life and, and got us involved in this. So we're just so excited about the work we're doing and we're so excited about the people that we're helping and uh, I wish I brought some of them with me today to, to just talk about the tremendous results. Um, oh, I'm getting a card waved at me. My name is Kurt Othmer <laughs> and <laughs> this is who I am. Kurt Othmer, the... The, okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kurt Othmer, um, the, 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 my, I guess they say my day job is, is EEG Info. We train professionals all over the country. We teach them, and actually all over the globe and in Europe and the U.S., we train professionals how to do this work and, and how to help other people. And so that's, that's kind of what I do. Uh, the, the day job and, and the, the nonprofit is called Homecoming for Veterans. And, and I really like, if you check out on YouTube and you go to Homecoming for Veterans, uh, search Homecoming for Veterans of PTSD on YouTube. You can see some great videos of some vets talking about the work that we do and talking about the success they've seen. And there's just some really extraordinary footage on there. Some, some we're, great we're, results. We're going to see you on Venice Beach. I hope so. Doing this. I hope so. For everybody that comes by in order to... And we're working on a poster. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready to this. Go ahead. It's going to be the poster, Jeremy. It's just going to be... <laughs> it's not coming up. I'm just talking about it. It's going to be... You know the the recruiting posters that says be all you can be in the army. Well, this shows Uncle Sam, and it says be all you can be with PTSD. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is take the stigma away from PTSD yes, because and amen. the people out there that are hiring people, if they knew that we had PSD, they think we're going to kill somebody. They think we're crazy. Yeah. No, we're we're. We're just like anybody else. We just have a problem, and yeah. we're trying to solve it. And sometimes we have nightmares. Anybody here never had a nightmare mm. on the air? Call me if you haven't, because I'd sure like to talk with you. Yeah, I have sure. daymares. <laughs> <laughs> mm, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. So, thank you so much. For thank doing you. That. Thank you, Kurt. And we want to join you and do all the things. And our next yeah. guy is Antoine. I couldn't spell his name right, but he can't spell it himself. So he goes by Q. Buddy, thanks for having me. Yes, this is uh, Antoine Washington again from Broken Hearts Ministry. And I just want to give you a, a quick snapshot about who we are and, and what we do. Um, just this last October, uh, our ministry had the privilege and honor of celebrating 10 years of um, work in the Los Angeles area and beyond. And, and we set up shop uh, every Thursday night and every um, Friday night out in Hollywood, California, a place that is very familiar uh, with fame and, and fortune, but also it has a different side of uh, the, the city 
that is sometimes overlooked. And so our ministry, our vision is to see lives holistically restored in our cities, not just Hollywood, but but beyond uh, by the participation of the church, uh, the work of Jesus Christ. Uh, And we we have seen in years uh, a number of friends that have come across us um, that have turned from those little small little buds into uh, glorious flowers, and, and we're excited about it. And the, and the way that we uh, go about that in our approach is by three Bs really quickly. Uh, the first B is just by building relationships with the community. Uh, the second is bridging the gap between the church and the streets. Uh, and then the third is to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, everywhere we go. And, and so we've uh, I've had a great honor and privilege of doing that by various different ways, whether that's church on the street, at midnight are uh, holding a, a street ministry one-on-one training for uh, community stakeholders and, and churches and, and, and councilmen and police officers and community activists and things of that nature, or whether that's just sitting at a baseball game and hanging out with someone that says, I have not had a friend that's truly listened to me because everyone that pays attention to me only wants something from me. Whatever that is, we, we are invested in it and we love it and we, we just find great joy in it. And, and so um, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited again, like Kurt said, to just be around a table of people who definitely have a passion and a desire um, to go out to those who have, may have been overlooked because we as well have fallen into that same category as <laughs> our, ourselves. And um, I, I was honored to hear a little bit of the testimony from uh, my brother Steve and, and his wife, Regina. And um, I talk about my story a little bit differently, but I say that I was the unexpected baby that came up, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and, and so um, our, our ministry's quest and this next uh, season for us is to look for the unexpected baby uh, on the streets mm-hmm. and to let them know that they have a father that loves and cares for them. And that starts with us first identifying that we have a father who loves and cares for us. Amen. And he calls us to love and care for those too as well that may feel like they're unexpected and not wanted. So thanks for letting me be here. Well, Jesus was an unexpected baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is for dang sure. Hey, you got to say something, I can tell. <laughs> well, I just want to uh, reiterate what's being said. It's an honor to sit at a table with folks who, who uh, love God and love people. And the biblical mandate uh, for all of us, uh, if you're a Christian, is to love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And as you well know, your neighbor as yourself. And your neighbor uh, very oftentimes doesn't live in a house. He, he sleeps on cardboard. Or uh, if he's fortunate enough to have a sleeping bag and some have tents. But they're our neighbors, no matter what their, their state in... Uh, in the social order of things, there are neighbors, and we're there for them, for the immediate need, and to demonstrate in a practical way the love of God, uh, which was best demonstrated, as Romans 5, 8 says, but God has demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the message uh, that I am honored to, to share with uh, these folks around this table an honorable group of people who love God and love people. Visit our website at uh, uh, venicefoursquarechurch.org. Uh, we're close to the oceanfront walk. Uh, my wife also has a drama ministry. You want to say something about your, it's, your, it's your Old time, Testament by the way. Play? You can promote whatever you want. Go ahead, Regina. Time, okay? You can look at venetiansonetheater.com. Um, I started writing when I was a little girl. Stop writing. And I believe God put the pencil in my hand again. And I I just love writing uh, Old Testament stories, musicals. And I found I had a gifting because people that weren't Christians were coming to the church to see my plays. Mm -hmm. And people drove by, when's the next play? And so I had just intended to show messages of God's love. Through the through humor and and song and and a lot of research and it was just, it started out just fun mm. until one day uh, a rabbi came 
with his staff. He heard I was doing Old Testament and fell in love with the play. And not a one of us was a Jew. Um, but he, he told me somehow you managed to capture the purity of the story with this cast of characters. And so he invited me to the Saban Theater to do a vignette of the Book of Ruth, my last play, because he was going to give a message on it. And granted, he's a Reformed Jew, but not not that Reformed. <laughs> he brings a bunch of Christians in. and, and uh, But I was honored that we had captured that story. And, I, and it's not a church play. I call it high theater. Amen. And everybody has to be gifted in what they do or... Goodbye. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want people with passion, people that know they have a gift and that they use it uh, with courtesy. Mm-hmm. I tell them we're not Hollywood. You know, we are, we are a biblical force. And, and who knows these stories better than us mm-hmm. because we have the spirit of, behind us. So I'm enjoying this new phase of of my senior citizen years, and uh, um, it's exciting. And I've been I did another play at the mission. I was invited by um, the Ann Douglas group to do a play there, uh, and that was wonderful. And I realized is she related to Kirk Douglas? Yes. Yeah. I realized I had that gift of exhortation in my plays. And so everybody says, oh, I feel lifted when I, when I leave and I, and I, and I did my job. So it's, it's fun. It's exciting. It's not work. It's I feel like a little girl running to the meadow or the vacant lot, whatever. So uh, I'm glad to be here. And it's Venetians one theater.com. Okay, shout out. Yeah, homecoming for veterans.org and check out the YouTube channel and uh, neurofeedback is what we do and biofeedback and, and you know, we're small. We're, we're trying to get the word out there and let people know what we're doing and I just, I, I appreciate you guys for having me on here and, and keep doing the amazing work you guys are doing. Keep doing this awesome show. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, as for us, uh, our website is uh, www.brokenheartsministry.org. The hearts is plural. Everything else is singular, <laughs> broken, singular, ministry, singular. Uh, you can find us on the web. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, if you're into books, if you uh, like us on Facebook, I am uh, in the process of writing a book called The Unexpected Baby. And so there are different quotes that come up on Facebook. So you can feel free to like us on there and you can get the tag. And the last thing I just want to invite you guys to is an opportunity to hang with us on the streets. And so every Last Thursday of the month, we have a, a ministry called White as Snow, which is, um, you guys are probably familiar with the a term laundry love. So it's kind of a spinoff of that. But we open up a, a, a laundry uh, facility and offer free clothing for any and everyone that wants to come and hang and get their clothes washed. I bring a load or two because I hate doing laundry by myself. <laughs> um, waiting for my w- soon-to-be wife, Shamara, to join so she can help do the laundry with me too but um anyhow so you can you can join us um we are at 6707 santa monica boulevard in hollywood california and it's the last thursday of the month at 8 30 p.m that's night time so uh if you need to drink a monster or red bull um please get one in your system and and we go to about 12 or 1 in the morning we will be out there on Thanksgiving, which is this month, the last Thursday, and then the following month we we go a week before um, a week before Christmas on the 18th. But join us; um, there'll be a great feast. Uh, there's a service that we have there, a church service, and then there's an opportunity to get your clothes washed and hang out and just maybe even get a little dirty. That's how we right. do in ministry. I was in the uh, <laughs> mission in the hurricane, in Hurricane Rita, and yes. our motto was. Getting dirty for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and if you uh, are looking for a church and you want to worship the Lord with us in Venice, we're at 1400 Riviera Avenue, the corner of uh, Riviera and Windward, just a few blocks from uh, Oceanfront Walk and the Venice Park. And our Sunday morning worship services are at 
9.30 a.m. It come, uh, come early for coffee and donuts on the patio at 9.30. We'd be happy to welcome you into the house. You guys time. got bear claws over there? Oh, we get bear claws. <laughs> you know what? They, for you, we'll get bear claws. Yeah, I'm, I'm I a go bear just with the bear claws. <laughs> of course you do, my, buddy. My Indian name is Tokida, which means little bear. <laughs> little bear. Uh-huh. I like it. I'm not grouchy. I just get a hold of you and never, never let go. <laughs> <laughs> so, What's that? Go ahead and, and promote yourself, all right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah, well, my work is explanatory for itself. I, that's <laughs> great for me, okay. I, but how can we reach can you now? Contact? Oh, you can go on my website. It's SeanMcAllister.biz. Okay. S-E-A-N-M-C-A-L-L-I-S-T-E-R.biz. Or you can call me at 213-924-6251. Or you can meet us at the coffee shop. I'm always at coffee. I mean, are you kidding? That, that's my other place right there. Tell them where the coffee shop is. It's okay. on, uh, it's actually 2901 Main Street, Santa Monica, California. That's where I'm always at. Uh, everybody there is the best. They take care of everybody there, even the homeless. When people come in there, they... They watch out for them. They actually, how do I say it? Uh, very respectful, very down to earth. Uh, two people there are really, really nice and down to earth. And two of the other girls that work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember when I was homeless there and they took care of everybody. And mm-hmm. that's why I go there is to support them. And that's where I'm always at every day. That's your office, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's my coffee office. Bean. Right there. Nice. Yeah. Right there. Coffee nice <laughs> accommodations. Big we're getting ready to coffee wrap up beans. here in a minute. So, um, Rose, a quick shout, and then we'll wrap, okay? If you are a band and you would like to become known or represented, mm-hmm. check out my good friend's webpage on Facebook, Fixion Music. Her name is Teresa Rockney. And they will promote you if they think you have really good talent, which I'm sure many of you do. If you're seeking representation, a band, check out Fixion Music on Facebook. Thank you. Okay, well, listen, in Venice on the 22nd at the Baptist Church, we're having a big thing for veterans there. I'm not sure about it. Do you know any more about it, Steve? All I know is the date and the location, and I think it's from 9 to 12. I think it's only three hours. Okay. Uh, but there's going to be lots of resources and, and resources that, that are available directly and references for good resources on the west side of Los Angeles as well. Okay, and then another thing that we're doing, we're working together with homeless people. So what we're doing, we're forming a volunteer group with our homeless friends where we volunteer to help other people. So this is the beginning because... People know me well enough to say I look me straight in the eye. The only help you're going to get is coming from yourself, so you better wake up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, thank you all for being on our program. I hope you all can come back again, and thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for having us. Listening to Occupy Skid Row.us with Chaplain Willis Buddy Clark Jr., a weekly Veterans News Net.us feature presented every Tuesday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Pacific Time, live at skidrowstudios.com. For more information and all of our past episodes, please go to Occupy Skid Row.us. Thank you for joining us. Day, new day.